Hey guys, uh, Chip from Expand Pen here with you, and what we wanted to shoot today was a tutorial on how to install our 110 and 155 body grip pans. First, before we get into the install, I wanted to show you a little bit about why you would really want to use a treadle pan or expand a pan on a body grip trap. Uh, with any of the body grip traps, anything from a 330 all the way down to the 110s, the whole idea we're asking that animal to go through our trap. Um, I've got a 160 right here, just for illustration purposes, and of course here's my 110. Do not have a 155 here, we'll get into that in a second. Uh, but, this is what we want to do. Um, if you can look at me, and I, I hate to make you guys look at my ugly face, but here again, you can see me through here. We're asking the animal to come through this trap. As he goes through this trap, he will actually uh, fire, you know, uh, move the trigger, the, uh, it will fire the trap, and he'll get caught. So that's the sight picture that the animal sees. He's got to somehow or another uh, maneuver through these wire whisker triggers, and this is what comes stock on most all the body grip traps right here. If you see that sight picture and you focus on my face right there, that picture compared to this picture, now it's a wide open view. Now the animal has a complete clear path he can come through, and it's just a much more inviting and, um, and way to, for him to travel through and we have found that the trigger avoidance with this is much greater. We see refusals and animals not wanting to come through uh, this with the wire whiskers, and we are that. So that's the reason that we go to the uh, pans, or as many people call them the, the treadle system, on body grip traps. We make them for 155s, oh, I'm sorry, for 110s, 155s. Uh, all the way up to, this is our 160, we make them for 220 body grips, all the way up to 330 body grips. So we pretty much got everything covered. Now, you, a lot of people may ask, well, what all is involved in changing them? So uh, a couple of things here. I'm gonna put this 160 down, and we're just gonna focus on this 110, because that's what this tutorial is for. Always, when you're handling these traps, guys, this is a live trap that's brand new, or just got this trap to, uh, so I could build the, as a model, to build the 110, expand the pan off of. Make sure you got these safeties on. Uh, this of uh, paramount importance. Uh, if you fold these things long enough, they will snap on you, will get caught, and it does hurt. It hurts bad. So always, always, always make sure you keep the safety on right here. So I'm gonna just let this trap go. I'm gonna basically take the, uh, the dog off of the wire trigger. And you'll see I've already got the springs compressed. It's a lot easier to do this with the springs compressed with the trap thrown. I happen to be dealing right here with a Bilal 110, but Jeep 110s, Bridge of 110s, um, uh, most of the other traps uh, are very, very similar. This piece that I have right here in my, in my fingers, I don't know if you can see this with the camera or not, camera might can zoom in, but this little square piece is very standard on most all the body grip traps. Now the only difference is Bilal actually uses a screw right here. They use a screw on the 330s or 220s, uh, the 160s, all of those use a screw. Uh, Duke and Bridger, for instance, use a rivet right here. No problem if you got a rivet, all you got to do is just to uh, drill that rivet out, remove the rivet, you can replace that with a uh, screw and a small bolt on the back side. Uh, that's what most people do. Other people, if they have a rivet gun, they can pop a new rivet in there. That works equally, equally as well. But our expander pan is going to slide right in the same bracket right here and this will be the attachment point for your new expander pan. So what we're gonna do simply with a blow, and I'm just gonna illustrate it here, the sizes are the same with all the manufacturers. I'm simply gonna remove the screw. That's all it is to it. Once that screw is removed, then the wire whisker will literally just slide, just slide out. Bam, right there. That's what it looks like when it's removed, super simple. All I did was remove the screw, and sl slide the, the wire whisker trigger out. I'm gonna lay that on the side because I'm not gonna need that. And now I am going to install the uh, expander pan. And all I simply have to do to install this expander pan, you can see the tab on the back. The tab has a hole in it that corresponds with a hole on the, uh, the, the wire whisker tri trigger keeper. And we're just gonna slide that right into place, just like that. Uh, in a the worst case scenario, you may have to take a pair of pliers and just barely spread this open just a tad bit, but most of the time you actually will, will not even have to do that. So once that's in there, I'll give you a side view to see. Uh, I basically just took the expander pan, slid it right in that, that bracket, just like that, okay? So the next thing is just this simple. 
you take your, your screw that I just removed from there, put it back in the hole, and grab your screwdriver, screw that right back down. Okay? I'm installed, guys. That's all it is to it. It's that simple. <clears throat> no, no other modifications necessary. That's installed. That's steady. I can't move that at all. I'm, I'm putting a lot of force here left and right, and I'm not able to move that. So, uh, so that's a solid install. Now, to set this trap, it's a little bit different, and it will take you the first three or four times you, you set it, it'll take a little bit of getting used to because now instead of having the wire whisker hanging down, we're going to set this basically what me, many people call upside down, okay? So now the pan's going to be at the bottom. Obviously, it's a trail pan, so the animal has to step on it. I'm going to squeeze, squeeze my jaws uh, closed. I want to make absolutely sure that my safety is on and that I've got a good grip on the top and the bottom jaw. I'm going to lay the pan over in place. I'm going to try to turn this where you can see it. This is really going to be awkward for me because not only am I setting it upside down, I'm also setting it backwards. I'm going to try to get right here where you, where you can see. And then I'm going to, to I will actually just let the trap ease open and you see that pan come alive right there. When you see that pan pop up, you know you're set. I'm going to try to do this again. You see it pop up. All I did, I'm letting, I'm letting this, this uh, trigger mechanism slide into the notch. While I'm, and I'm literally putting a little bit, bit of pressure on this dog on the bottom of the table. And when you see that pan come alive, then you know you're set. I still very, very careful when, um, when, when I come out with it. But, um, but here again, it's, it is that simple. It's, um, a lot of times when I'm in the field, I'll do that on my knee. I'll put the dog on my knee and let that, that pan come alive. As soon as, soon as it comes alive, I know, I know I'm in the notch, then we're set. Now here again, this is a sight picture you're looking at. Uh, versus what we had before. Animal has a clear shot, a clear view through there, um, and it's, it's really, really easy for them to come through. Uh, a couple things about these pans. Um, the 110 is a four and a half inch wide trap, right? Um, and that's basically from jaw to jaw. I'm gonna show you on the top side so I don't don't uh, get bit by this trap. And I'm actually gonna point to it with my screwdriver. From this, this jaw right here, and these jaws are slightly offset with every body grip, but the closest inside jaw to the closest inside jaw are basically you're looking at the front and the back side of the trap. But, uh, but basically the inside two points on this trap, uh, they call it a four and a half inch trap. It's actually only got about four and a quarter clearance. So what we're doing in between the pan and the jaw, we're leaving about a half inch total here. Okay, so, uh, so we should be pretty close to center it up right there, leaving a half inch total. On 155 trap, which I do not have one with me right now, but 155, as compared to 110 goes up to a five inch trap. So I'm only increasing by half inch for the total jaw spread. So it basically means if I had the trap pan centered, then I'm adding a, only a quarter of an inch here, here. In either case, uh, even an animal as small as a mink or a squirrel cannot go through there without having at least, you know, at least his inside feet on the pan. So there's no reason to make a completely different uh, uh, expander pan for the 155 versus the 110. The two will interchange and work with each other. Okay, guys, that's it. Uh, these things are, are, uh, are really sensitive. I'll go ahead and fire this trap with the safety zone so it won't completely fire, but uh, it does not take much. Uh, you've got a fulcrum effect. You can see that this pan uh, now can be triggered from way out here. I do like the leading edge of the trap, uh, the direction I expect the animal to come through. In other words, if I expect the animal to come from this way on the leading edge of the trap, um, uh, you know, pointing toward the direction he comes. The reason why you got a fulcrum effect. The, the pan tension is, is actually lighter on this side than it is this back side here where the dog attachment is. I uh, hope that makes sense. If you got any questions or comments, guys, feel free to, uh, to check us out. Uh, you can get us on email um, or you can uh, through our website. Our website is www.expandedpantraps.com. You can also order online there as well. We've got an online store uh, for your convenience there. I uh, appreciate it, guys. I'm going to fire this trap off. It just takes just a bump right there and the trap fires. So uh, I appreciate you watching. Hopefully this is helpful. If you got any questions or comments, feel free to give us a shout. Thanks a bunch.